<laughs> this is chapter 10, pre-calculus, lesson four on page 644. Okay, we are still on vectors. We're still in polar form. But now we're going to look at powers of complex numbers. And we're going to look at roots of complex numbers. All right, so... A power raised to a power we? Multiply. Oh, guess what we're going to do? Multiply. We're going to multiply. That's right. We are going to multiply. Okay. All right. What, what do we multiply by? That number right there. That's what we're multiplying by. That's what we're going to multiply by. So... If 5 is my exponent <coughs> and I come up with cosine pi over 4, then it's going to be cosine 5 times pi over 4 because that's what we're multiplying by, whatever, yes. whatever the exponent is. <clears throat> okay, now. All right. What is the rule for this? We divide. This is, what are we dividing by? We're dividing by three. So if I want the third root of any, of any um, polar number and I have cosine pi over four, I'm going to divide by three, which is multiplying by one third. Got it? Wait, so we're gonna get to here. This one's more complex because if I'm looking for the third root, then there's more than one solution. <coughs> but we're gonna get to that one, okay? All right, we're gonna start with power. The power rule is De Moivet's theorem. De Moivet, the R is silent. <clears throat> All right. All right, so, oh, my iPad just moved twice. So if I'm raising something to a power, right, guys, I'm taking my modulus to that power, you got it? And I'm going to multiply that X times theta. Make sense? Whatever my exponent is. <clears throat> All right, but in order to raise it to a power, I have to have it in polar form. So we're not going to begin with polar form. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is convert this to polar form. Our complex number we're going to convert to polar form. <coughs> so you draw it. That's right. Negative square root of 3, 1. Didn't we already do this one? That's two. Didn't we do this one in the previous? <laughs> we, it wasn't negative. But... Yes, it was. So this is pi over six, right? So that's five pi over six, right? Everybody remember that? Maybe it's a one square root of three, two. One is always the opposite to 30 degrees. 30 degrees is pi over six. We go from the positive x axis Pi minus pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. <laughs> All right, so this is going to equal 2 to the fifth power times cosine 5 times 5 pi over 6 plus I sine 5 times 5 pi over 6. 2 to the fifth. I think that's 32, right? Because 2 to the 4th is 16, I believe. 
So this is cosine 25 pi over 6 plus I sine 25 pi over 6. Now, in this lesson, they are going back to the rectangular form or the complex number. And they are calling it the rectangular form like we did last year. All right? So, now we're going to write this back in, pull, back in rectangular form. Why? Because I want to know what this to the fifth is. All right, so the first thing I had to do <clears throat> was go to polar form. This is easier than multiplying <clears throat> this by itself five times. Then once I get to polar form, <clears throat> I mean, once I raise the polar form to the fifth power, I'm going back to my complex form, which is, we're now calling it rectangular, which is exactly what we called it last year. <clears throat> All right, this is polar. <coughs> All right, now we have to decide what quadrant, what quadrant is 25 pi over 6 in? And here's the hard part. Okay, well, let's subtract going all the way around, which is 2 pi, right? All the way around is 2 pi. So subtract 12 pi over 6 because that's 2 pi. But am I going to end up less than 12 pi over 6? So let's subtract one more, 12 pi over 6. So see, I've gone around twice. And what am I left with? Pi over 6. So when I raise this to the fifth power, I end up in what quadrant? The first quadrant. All right, so let's draw it. I know this is pi over six, and um, this is 32, I was writing 36. 32, all right. I'm not using my calculator because I know the Pythagorean triplet, because pi over six is a 30, right? And this is my hypotenuse. To go from the hypotenuse opposite 30, you take half, so it's 16. <clears throat> and to get from, yes, to get from opposite 30 to opposite the 60, I multiply by square root of 3. So this is 16 square root of 3. All right, so the answer is my real number, 16 square root of 3, plus, so this, the plus or minus is dictated by what quadrant I'm in for both of these, right? <clears throat> plus 16i. So if I multiplied that by itself five times, I'd end up with this. All right? Do you understand why now we're going back to rectangular? It's because we began with rectangular. Previous lesson, we were just going back and forth between complex and polar, right? Between rectangular and polar. All right, let's work example two. <coughs> All right, is everybody with me? Everybody good? Yes. yes. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to do 1 plus i <clears throat> to the 10th power. All right. What's the first thing I do? Triangle. Draw the triangle. What quadrant are we in? One. First one. It's a 1, a 1, Square root of two. So what's the angle? And in radians? Pi over four. All right. We're to the tenth power. So it's the square root of two raised to the tenth power. I could also write this as two to the one half, right? Raised to the tenth, which is just two to the fifth. Right? All right, so I'm going to erase this, but, you know, you can do that. <clears throat> so we're going to end up with 32 here. 
Now it's going to be the cosine of 10 times pi over 4 plus i sine 10 times pi over 4. Let's simplify before we multiply. That becomes 2. That becomes 5. So it's 5 pi over 2. <clears throat> so it's cosine 5 pi over 2 plus i sine 5 pi over 2. That's how many halves of a pi? How many whole pies do we have? Two. Okay, so that's one whole pie, which is two pi over two, right? This is two whole pie, which is four pi over two. How much further do I have to go? A half a pie. It's on the axis. So it only has what value? One, zero, one. Which value does it have? It only has an i value because it would be zero plus some number i. We don't add zero, right? <clears throat> All right, so we just have to figure out the I value, right? How do we figure out the I value? <laughs> well, isn't it just 32? What is the cosine at 5 pi over 2? Zero. Zero. <clears throat> what is the sine at 5 pi One. over 2? Well, There's my I. And then there's one. <coughs> Zero plus 32i, which is just 32i. So see, you can use these values with your modulus outside, then distribute it to get to your rectangular <coughs> form. So that would this, yes. You know what? This is a scalar as opposed to a vector because it only has one direction. Scalars only have one direction. Yes? Question did we ask to get zero from What is the cosine of 5 pi over 12? Right here. 2, 5 pi over 2. What's the sign of, yes. We literally solved what's inside of here, then distributed the 32. We could have done that at the last one, but we looked at the rectangle. So you can actually go both ways, right? <clears throat> because the last one was, let's go back to the last one. The last one we had, I just want to show you, 32 cosine pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. We drew the triangle. But look, you can just do the math. All right, what's, what is the cosine of pi over six? The cosine counts down. So it's square root of three over two. You didn't have to do this. You could have drawn the triangle like we did. Mackenzie, y'all following? All right, and then we have i, and the sine of pi over six is? All right, so that would have been 32, square root of 3 over 2 plus 32 over 2i. Well, that's 16 square root of 3 plus 16i. You see, we got the same exact answer as we did when we drew the triangle. It was harder here because it was on an axis. And you couldn't draw a triangle. So it was harder to see. It was just one direction. All right, so you can always solve here and then distribute your modulus. Make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now, roots. Roots are division. I want you to go to the uh, bottom of page 647. 
Here is what is different about roots. <clears throat> All right, so if I want, let's say, the end root of z, some vector, right? Then it's going to be the end root of r, my modulus, times cosine. And remember we said it was division. However, we're also going to keep going around the unit circle. All right, so it's theta plus 2k pi all over n plus i sine theta plus 2k pi all over n, n being the root. All right, so <coughs> if my n is 3, if my root is a third root, so I want a cube root of something, then I'm going to have three answers. My three answers, okay, I'm going to solve for r. I'm going to solve for theta. I already know n is 3. But what I substitute in k this is where I'm going to plug in three different values, all right? So if, I, if, my, if I'm looking for a cube root, then one solution is going to be when k is zero. You always start with zero. The second root is going to be when k is one. The third root is going to be when k is two. <coughs> if I had a fifth root, how many answers am I going to have? Five. My first one is going to be when k is zero. My second one is going to be when k is one. Then k is two. K is three. K is four. All right. So let's work the fourth root one. All right. In order to take the root of a rectangular number, which is the complex number, I have to first convert it to polar form. Okay, so I want the fourth root. I'm already telling myself k is 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to have those four solutions, right? <coughs> and I want it of negative 8 plus 8i square root 3. All right, so we're going to draw it. This is negative 8. This is 8 square root 3. Do you see a Pythagorean triplet? It's 1 square root 3, 2. So what is this, the value? 16. All right. Everybody follow that? Everybody got that? All right. So, we are looking at my modulus is 16, but I want the fourth root. Right? And then, I'm just going to write it before I do the k. Well, this can be k equals 0. All right, because it's theta plus 2k pi divided by 4. All right, so we didn't get theta. What is theta? What is this? Pi over 6. So this is 5 pi over 6. All right, so it's the cosine 5 pi over 6 plus 2. My k is 0 for this one. Because I'm starting with k is 0. I have four of them. You see what I'm doing? I'm doing the k equals zero all over four plus, now I forgot to write my pi. 
plus I sine 5 pi over 6 plus 2 times 0 times pi. It's pi over 3. Oh. Because it's Oh, it, that's, that's the 60. That's the 60. We are um, creatures of habit because we've only been dealing with the 6. All right, so it's 4 pi over 3. Thank you. <laughs> 2, that's right, because that would be in the wrong quadrant. 2 pi over 3. All right, so this is 2 pi over 3. Do you all see the mistake I made? This is because before we had the 1 across here, but that's the square root of 3. So that's the 60 degree, which is pi over 3. So that angle is 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. All right, this is just zero, guys, right? Zero times anything is, is just simply zero. All right? Why do you add the 2 pi again? When we have roots, who asked that question? When we have roots, we always will have however many solutions as there are roots. Always. Right, because that tells me what quadrant it's in. Yes. What now? Nothing. I was just asking that probably because it was scary. Okay. Well, if I'm giving a test, it's not going to be a high road. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. I get exhausted working these problems. So I don't want to have to look at, I don't want to have to grade these problems. Okay, what's the fourth root of 16? Two. All right, this is 2 pi over 3 divided by 4, which is like multiplying by? One fourth. It's multiplying by 1 fourth, but we can cancel that out. So that's, yeah, cosine pi over 6, and it's going to be the same thing. I sine pi over 6. All right, now let's convert that back to rectangular form. It's going to be two times cosine of pi over 6. Square root 3 over 2 plus i 1 half, which is what? The 2's eliminate. All those 2's eliminate, right? Square root 3 plus i. That's the first answer. You always want the final answer to be in rectangular form? Yes, because we start with rectangular form. When you start with rectangular form, you want to end with rectangular form. And same thing with Paul, if we start with Paul, end with Paul? Yes. So then you just do that for, okay. Okay, we're going to go through them. This is our last example. Yeah. Now we're going to make K equal to 1. Okay. Come on, guys. We can do this. Okay. So we know it's going to be 2 because it's the fourth root of that. And we know it's going to be cosine 2 pi over 3 plus 2 times 1 times pi. That's just 2 pi over 1 fourth. Uh, over 1 fourth. Over 4. Which is like multiplying by 1 fourth. Plus I sine 2 pi over 3 plus 2 times 1 times pi all over 4. All right, now we have to decide what 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi is. That's 6 pi over 3, right? So I'll do that over here. I'll do that down here and then I'll, I'll erase it. I'll, I'll do it over here. So we're working on 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi divided by 4. That's what we're working on. All right. So we're going to multiply this by 3 over 3 to have a common denominator in the numerator. Y'all, this is algebra, complex fractions, right? All right. So this is 6 and 2 is 8 pi over 3. So that's 8 pi over 3 divided by 4. Right. 1 fourth over 1 fourth, but simplify. That's crazy. It's just 2 pi over 3. I know. That's crazy. Okay, so just know it's 2 pi over 3. Okay, I'll write it here. 2 times the cosine 2 pi over 3 
plus I sine 2 pi over 3. Now we're going to go back to rectangular. It's 2. What quadrant are we in? The cosine is negative. The sine is going to be positive. What is the cosine of 2 pi over 3? What, which one is it? One half. one half. Because the cosine counts down. down. Is it really one half? Yes, it is. And so the sine is I square root of 3 over 2. What happens to my 2s? They all cancel. They all cancel. So that's negative 1 plus I square root of 3. Remember when we have a radical, the I goes in front of it. Okay, we only have two more to go. But we're going to keep going because you have to keep going on the test, right? Because there are four solutions, four roots. All right, now let's go to K equals 2. All right, here's where K equals 2. It's 2. Cosine, we did say 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 plus 2 times 2 times pi all over 4 plus I sine 2 pi over 3 plus 2 times 2 times pi all over 4. This will be our last example. We're not going to, um, we're not going to do, um, Roots of unity. All right, so now let's solve this. It's 2 pi over 3 plus 4 pi all over 4. Common denominator. <clears throat> so that's 12 pi over 3. Yes? Yes. 12 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3, which is 14 pi over 3 divided by 4. So it's times 1 fourth, right? Let's simplify. That becomes 2 and that becomes 7. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's 7 pi over 6. Got it? 7 pi over 6. <clears throat> Alright, so it's 2 times the cosine 7 pi over 6 plus I sine 7 pi over 6. What quadrant is 7 pi over 6 in? The fourth quadrant. Right? The third. I meant the third. This is the third. The third. They're both negative. All right. They're both negative. All right. But it's still the pi over six number. <coughs> So the cosine is square root of 3 over 2. The sine is 1 half. What happens? 2 is cancel. It's negative square root of 3 minus i. Notice how similar all the values are. <coughs> you see how similar they are? So the k equals 0 was in the first quadrant. <coughs> k equals 1 was in the second quadrant. K equals 2 is in the third quadrant. What are you expecting K equal 3 in? Fourth. That's the fourth quadrant. Well, okay, so let's do K equals 3. All right, so notice the patterns, right? We're getting a solution in every quadrant. All right, so this is when K is 3. 2, cosine. Is everybody with me? Yes. I forgot to put over four. <clears throat> All right, Nathaniel, tell um, Jesse what we just said, what we just noticed. Um, what we noticed is, Michael, what did we just notice? Hannah? We're getting a solution for every quadrant. We're getting a, when there's a fourth oh. root, we're getting a solution for every quadrant. Okay, <clears throat> let's figure this out. So, 
So it's 2 pi <coughs> over 3 plus 6 pi over 4, common denominator, 18 and 2 is 20, yes, yes, 20 pi over 3, all over 4, yes, that becomes 2, well, we're going to have to multiply by 2, no, 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 that becomes 1, that becomes 5, 5 pi over 3, yes, all right, so it's 2 cosine 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. Where is 5 pi over 3? It is in the fourth quadrant. It's only a third of a pi away from two whole pi's, okay? All right, so now cosine is positive, sine is negative. Right, I'm going to have engaging my brain because I'm in the fourth quadrant. I'm going to make sure I know what values are positive or negative. Okay, so in the first quadrant, it's pi over three. So that is, it counts down. So it is one half. This is square root of three over two. Again, my twos cancel. It's one minus I square root of three. Okay, so we had four answers. We had square root of 3 plus i, which is square root of 3 plus 1, right? Just the, that was in the first quadrant. Second quadrant, negative 1 plus i squared of 3. They, they swap. They go back and forth. That's what they do. Look at all the answers. Y'all look at the pattern. I just want you to see the pattern, and then we're done. All right? <clears throat> All right, so the first one was square root of 3 plus i. The second one was negative 1 plus i squared of 3. The third one, which is really k equals 2, right? Negative square root of 3 plus i. What is negative square root of 3 minus i? Minus, you're exactly right. Thank you for correcting me. All right, and then this one was I, no, not I, I, want, I go second, 1. 1 minus square root of 3 I. <laughs> notice, notice what happens. It just zigzags. All the numbers zigzag. The signs change my quadrant. 